This is Dennis McMahon and welcome to Positively Vermont. And today we are going to be exploring one of the most interesting and historic events in Vermont, the Vermont Quilt Festival, which is celebrating, I believe it's 45th anniversary. And we have a panel of guests who are gonna tell us everything you need to know about quilting, about the history of quilts, and how to get involved uh, with the Vermont Quilt Festival. And uh, we have uh, Caitlin Delano, uh, who is the show coordinator. Uh, we have Carrie Zizza, who is the contest chair. And we have Laura Clements, uh, who is the exhibits chair. And each a very uh, big responsibility. So what I'd like to ask first is each one of you, I'll start uh, on the screen with Carrie. Tell us a little bit about yourself and how you got involved with quilts and the quilt festival. Uh, Carrie, you want to tell us a little bit about yourself? Sure. I've been quilting for about 22 years. And I always, every year I would go to the Vermont Quilt Festival because it was just the, the atmosphere and the flavor of the show was just so welcoming and so accessible. And um, as I continue my quilting journey, um, the board positions opened up and I had been uh, the uh, contest chair basically at my local quilt guild. So when the contest chair for the Vermont Quilt Festival became available, I was like, ah, oh, love that show, want to be involved. And I applied for the uh, position and I got it. And I was very happy about that. And um, it's been wonderful. Uh, uh, this is my, last year was my first year, but the show was canceled. And so this is actually my second year on the board, but my first actual show. And um, it's just been so much fun working with the board and um, the public and the, and the contestants. It's just, it's been wonderful. Great. Well, Laura, tell us a little bit about yourself. I've been quilting for a little over 40 years. My mom taught me. And 16 years ago, I moved to Vermont and went to my first Vermont Quilt Festival and thought I had done God to heaven, this fantastic event with all these world-class teachers right near Vermont was only half an hour away from me. So for me, Vermont Quilt Festival week every year feels like it should be a national holiday. And so um, I'm involved with some of the local quilting guilds. And so when I heard about the position of uh, exhibits coordinator being open, I checked in with some friends and a good friend who was actually the previous coordinator. So I thought it might be a great fit for me and like Carrie applied for the position and um, was given a chance to work with this fantastic group. Great. Well, Caitlin, you're the uh, show coordinator. Tell us a little bit about yourself and uh, the Vermont Quilt Festival. Yes. Um, I have been with VQF for, this would be our, my third show. Yes, our third festival together. Um, and I am also a quilter and all doing all, do all the crafts. <laughs> um, and I have been, it's been a fantastic to be involved with VQF. Um, not only is it so rewarding and inspiring to see all of the quilters and all of their work, but you get to you get to meet so many wonderful people, and um, yeah, it's just a fantastic time. VQF is a super special place, and I'm so lucky to be involved. That's great. Well, tell us what what a quilt is. I know you have varieties. We uh, when we did this in studio, we had people, two or three people, just carrying big rolls in, and we had other people with little uh, uh, tiny kinds of quilts. Tell us what a quilt is. And, and how did it become an art form and, and for some a hobby and for others a business? So, so anyone could chime in on these questions. Okay, I'll take it. Um, the quilting industry in the United States right now is over $3 billion. And there are, uh, there are quilters who, for this is just a hobby and there are quilters for who this is a business. They're either um, teaching, lecturing, or entering competitions with their quilts. And what a quilt is, is it consists of three layers, the top, the batting, and the backing. 
And putting together and sewing together the top is called piecing. And actually stitching the three layers together is called quilting. And if it doesn't have three layers, if the layers aren't all stitched together, it isn't a quilt. And what, what um, uh, types of uh, uses did it have in addition to uh, providing warmth? Uh, what was it used for? Uh, when did it become uh, an art form in and of itself? Okay, I'll go. <laughs> <laughs> um, quilting has been around since the beginning of time, since you know man was able to stitch things together using um, sinew, bone needles, um, these kinds of things. Um, but it, uh, in the 1970s, in the uh, bicentennial era in 1976, quilting made a huge comeback. And uh, since then, it's just really taken off. Um, what started as people assembling the three layers uh, for uh, just utilitarian uh, needs to keep warm or uh, to, there was actually quilt that was used as armor and uh, for uh, warriors. And so as, as the, as, you know, since the 1970s, it has just developed into um, many, many different kinds of forms. Like there are art quilts that are just designed to be art, pieces of art. There are, of course, still bed quilts. There's quilts that are um, designed and made to be hung on the wall as decoration. Um, there are all different kinds of um, types of quilts. Like for example, in the Vermont Quilt Festival, we have several different categories of quilts. And for some of those, one of the categories is pictorial. It's if whatever image on the quilt is Rec easily recognizable as a person, place, or thing that goes into the pictorial category. And we have um, the miniature category, where it's just actually very interesting to me. It's the miniature category is the quilt can be no larger than 24 inches on one side or 90 inches perimeter. And um, if you look at it in a photograph, you would not be able to tell how big the quilt actually was. So some of these bed quilts get scaled way down into these tiny little quilts. Um, so that is one of, I, for me, that is one of the most exciting and interesting categories in the show is the miniatures. And uh, there's the size quilts that are basically just uh, categorized according to size and they can be used for anything, you know, a throw on the couch, on, your, uh, on a quilt on your bed. Um, so whatever, the, the uses of quilts is just limited by a person's imagination. I think I remember the postage stamps they did at the bicentennial with, with quilts and uh, uh, that kind of dates me. But uh, one of the things that uh, I was impressed about uh, when we uh, did shows about the festival in the past that is the diversity of people involved. Uh, it is not just a, a, a female occupation or uh, avocation, or, or it's not just something limited to the industrial uh, giants of, of quilts and, and uh, manufacturing and uh, uh, all kinds of race, creed, color, sexual orientation. Uh, it, it's a very, and also, not particularly an American thing. I, I know we've had guests from uh, England uh, on the show uh, to talk about quilts. Uh, so maybe someone would like to uh, contemplate on what uh, this year's show is going to be in terms of uh, uh, diversity and participation. I think Caitlin is ready to uh, answer that. We are so excited this this year. I mean, it's it's been as um, Carrie mentioned earlier, earlier last year's festival was canceled um, due to the pandemic. And so we were very excited to still be able to join and meet and have VQF this year. Um, and we're doing it all virtually. And that provides so much more opportunity for people anywhere around the world to join. And so we've had 
we have some amazing instructors and participants and people taking classes from India to uh, Alaska. It's been really exciting. And um, we've got some fantastic instructors teaching all sorts of, of different concepts and um, quilting backgrounds. So yeah, we're really excited. And we also have a fantastic youth category too. So we try to encourage all people to come and quilt with us and just have fun. That's well, great. I noticed this is going to be running uh, 10 days, uh, June 17th to uh, June 27th online. Uh, I think it used to be at the Champlain Valley uh, Exposition uh, in, the, in the old days, but uh, this is going to be uh, pretty worldwide for, for 10 days. And uh, I'd just like to find out uh, from, from you all what, what events are being planned. I, I, I have a whole list here, but why don't we start out with the virtual quilt contest. Tell us what that's about. So um, the virtual quilt contest was pretty, um, I, I, it was just very interesting <laughs> to try and put that together this year because I had never done anything like that before. And um, so what happens is people in a virtual quilt contest, people will submit their um, photographs of their quilts, five photographs, five shots that were uh, required. And then um, those are passed along to our judges. We have two judges this year. We usually have four. And um, they uh, judge the quilts by the photographs. And they were able to zoom in and get up, uh, you know, real close to examine the different parts of the quilts that they wanted to see. And um, so each contestant gets a, a score sheet from each of the judges with comments and a, a numerical value of their score. And this is what is, I think, unique. And for me, the most um, special thing about the Vermont Quilt Festival is each quilt is judged on its own merits. It, um, in, in most other quilts, each category is judged, and then there's a first place, a second place, and a third place winner. And in the Vermont Quilt Festival, it, each, uh, each quilt gets a ribbon if the score merits it. And then we have our special categories like best of show, best machine quilting. Uh, each judge gets to pick their favorite quilt and give that a ribbon. And uh, we do have a very, very special youth category that um, they usually uh, get a special gift of some sort uh, just for entering. And um, it was, there was a lot of technicality um, involved, but it all came together. And Caitlin is the circulatory system of the Vermont Quilt Festival and she, I think worked some pretty long, pretty hard hours to get this all going and is still working long and hard hours. Um, that's but great. that's basically the contest in a nutshell. And uh, also someone could summarize what else is gonna be going on. Well, I understand we had exhibits, vendors, classes, and lectures. Uh, could someone uh, summarize that? Uh, we're having a little bit of a time pressure here right now. Uh, but if you could just uh, summarize what else is going to be happening at the festival. I understand exhibits, vendors, classes, and lectures. Yeah, I'll jump in. We have five special exhibits this year. It wouldn't be a Vermont quilt festival without antique quilts, and that's one area of our special exhibits and events. We also have a beautiful collection of very modern quilts from the Modern Quilt Guild. And we have a fiber art exhibit. As Carrie mentioned, a lot of quilts are really uh, intended to be art in the art category. And so we have a beautiful exhibit called Visionary uh, of Art Quilts. And then there's a special exhibit of quilts from our 45 year history of contest quilts. And they all feature the color blue because it's our sapphire anniversary. So lots to see this year with special exhibits, all from the comfort of your own home. That's great. Um, I, I remember uh, in, in previous episodes uh, of the show, we, we, we were shown a, a quilt that's gonna be raffled off. Tell us about 
what's going to happen with the, the raffle vote this year. Caitlin, I see you're ready to answer. <laughs> yes, yes. So every year we have a raffle quilt uh, made by someone in the community and we are thrilled to have that again this year virtually. Um, so we have a beautiful quilt um, that has a great blue theme uh, for our Sapphire year that will be raffled off and tickets can be purchased. Uh, attendees can purchase tickets at the virtual show and the winner will be announced on Sunday the 27th. How can people participate in this? Uh, uh, how do they uh, connect uh, w with the show? Yes, you can visit vqf.org, as in Vermont Quilt Festival, uh, vqf.org, um, and you can purchase uh, a $5 show pass, and that will get you access, virtual access to all of the exhibits, um, vendor demos, gallery talks with exhibitors, so you can see all the contest quilts, um, a lot of really fun events going on. And again, access to that, all the raffles. And, um, and then we also do have uh, other lectures and classes that are still accepting registration. So if anybody sees uh, anything exciting there, we uh, signups happen until the day of the event, so. That's great. And I understand it's gonna be uh, streamed live on your Facebook page, is that a fact? Yes, the award ceremony will be streamed live through Facebook on Wednesday, June 16th. So that's going to be uh, the, the night before. So it's going to kick off uh, June 16th. And tell us about the virtual award ceremony. How is that going to work? Uh, basically, I, Carrie is going to be coordinating a fantastic show with uh, the judges and also contestant winners. So it is the first time to be revealed the contest quilt winners. Uh, it's always a lot of fun and very exciting for everybody to, to see that for the first time. And what's the follow up from that? Will that, that quilt be uh, the winner? Will, will it be used uh, during the coming year for any uh, events or, or, or specialty uh, uh, operations by, by the Vermont Quilt Festival, uh, or will it be on your literature or something like that? What is, what is the distinction that goes with being the winner? Yes, yes. Well, I'll, Carrie can talk about the awards, but there's a very prestigious Best of Show Award, um, and all of the ribbon winners will be displayed in person at the next um, festival in 2022 when we are in person. Um, but Carrie can talk more about those exciting awards. We have several, and um, the like. The most prestigious is the uh, best of show, which would be what the judges consider to be the best quilt in the show. The next most prestigious is the uh, Vermont. I think they call it the Governor's Award, um, but it is basically an award given to the best quilt from Vermont, and. Um, we have uh, several other uh, machine quilting uh, ribbons. Um, best, best pictorial, uh, best miniature, um, and the judges also uh, are able to customize the awards to uh, quilts that they feel like deserve special recognition but don't fit into any of the actual categories. Excellent. Well, um, how many people do you uh, have participate when it was live? We generally see around anywhere from four to 10,000 attendees each year. So we are looking forward to, to seeing people again virtually this year in a different capacity, but we're it's gonna be a lot of fun and still being able to explore and enjoy quilting together. Well, that's great. And you have a website, uh, which is www.vqf.org. And uh, you also have a Facebook page for further information. Well, this has been wonderful. Uh, I want to thank you for appearing on Positively Vermont. My guests have been Caitlin Delano, the show coordinator, Carrie Zizza, the contest chair, and Laura Clements, the exhibits chair uh, for the Vermont Quilt Festival, which will be starting on June 16th. This is Dennis McMahon, and thank you for watching.